to learn the good, the bad, and the reality of the nomadic lifestyle, click the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Click the bell notification. Kind of funny how many subscribers have told me that they're not going to watch my videos as long as I'm at the Grand Canyon because they're scared of heights and the heights of this scares them. I think these are the reasons why I am out here. Right here, this, this really captures my adventurous imagination. You know, being at the ocean and being up in the hills. We lived kind of in the woods a little bit and I could walk up over the hill and I could sit on a cliff that overlooked the river. Generations before me, someone carved out a bench in the rocks, the cliff rocks, that had an overhang so I could sit there in the rain and I could watch the river. It was really neat. This really captures me and I hate that I've lost subscribers because I'm showing you my adventurous behavior. Anybody that's going to do the nomadic lifestyle is going to do it for their own reasons and they're going to do it their way. And so the other day I was asked, what is your five year plan? And I'm actually asked this a lot. Well, you know, what's your next vehicle? What are you going to do, uh, you know, in the future? Are you always going to do this? It's an interesting question because my entire life I've always had a plan. You know, I, when I was raising my daughter, I had a, a long-term plan. Uh, well, I mean, a fairly significant long-term plan, which was we were going to homeschool her and get her into college at 14 years old. And then she would be able to go get a, a degree or two or one six-year degree, whatever the case is. She ended up getting two degrees. Uh, so she went into college at 14. You know, when I set up my goals, I'm very dedicated to my goals. I had a goal that I was going to build a business. So from 2000 to 2011, I ran my own consulting firm. I went into manufacturers, huge manufacturers. I went in Northrop Grumman, which is a military supplier to the United States uh, Navy. And I showed them how to improve their training program so they could produce better quality products. I was always so driven. And then I decided to go ahead and quit the uh, company. Uh, you know, the town downturn in 2008, it was just becoming more of a struggle than I was willing to push. And so I went and worked for uh, a couple sheltered workshops where they manufactured product. You, and we hired disabled folks to teach them how to work in a manufacturing environment. I pushed myself to death trying to succeed at that. I found that I was a really good leader. I could lead, I could lead the disabled folks, I could lead the supervisors, and I was really good at focusing on the manufacturing process and how to improve it, how to maximize e efficiencies. But what I really struggled with was the politics of the organization. I really did not do well. And by the time I actually understood what was happening around me with the politics, it was too late. They transferred me to a different organization, and it just went downhill from there, uh, which drove me into this lifestyle. Now, there was a couple things that I planned, you know, thought about uh, during all this. And there was a couple things. One, I, I, I thought about starting a small engine repair business. Just something I could do in my backyard. Uh, just kind of, you know, make some money, be able to pay the bills, do something that I really enjoy working with my hands. That, that was an option. But then we started looking into the nomadic lifestyle, being able to sit on the edge of a cliff like this. So I went back to kind of what I was doing before and started, got back into programming. So I have a few companies that I program with. Now that we're out here, I don't have a goal. My goal is, is wake up tomorrow and be here. And on Tuesday, we'll go to the next spot, which is kind of exciting. So I don't have long-term goals. My, my goals now are about six months long. Back in January, I started planning out our trip here to Arizona. Well, then Carolyn and I said, okay, what are we going to do for the next two months after we leave uh, the Grand Canyon? And so we're going to go into Utah, and then we'll probably come back to the Grand Canyon because this is our six-month plan. The Grand Canyon was the six-month plan. So we'll come back to the Grand Canyon, head on over to Chateau, uh, Arizona again, over to New Mexico, and then back into Texas around October. Now, here's the important aspect of not having a plan. The key to this is make sure you have a backup plan. Carolyn and I will ha have enough money that if something happened where we said, okay, we're just not going to do this anymore, that we could go live back in a stick and brick. We could go rent a place, not do anything for six months, 
real easy. Now, what I think I'll do is I will go back to my original idea. I think I will actually try to start a small engine repair shop. Now, of course, in order to do that, I got to go to a small town uh, where people cut their grass. As far as staying out here, how long are we going to stay out here? It's unlimited to me. As, as long as we can continue to physically do the lifestyle, it's unlimited. Now that we've been at it for two years, this is just life to us. Carolyn and I was just talking about this this morning. When we went over to Chanto and we saw the old Navajo caves that they lived in, I, you know, the first question that comes to mind is, how did they survive that? How did they do it? That would have been a you know, miserable existence. But they got, they didn't know anything different. That was their life. Well, now that we've been doing this to the, for two years, it's hard to remember what it's like to live in a house. You know, Carolyn said today, you know, yeah, there's still difficult aspects to this lifestyle. There's things, you know, like when I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, that is a real pain. But there's difficult aspects about living in a house, too. You know, the, when you live in a house, then you got to furnish it, you got to put things in it, you got to pay for the electric, which means you got to go to work every day. But the, the thing that you have to remember when you come out here is it's going to be rough in the beginning uh, if you're going to do it like we do it. Now, I recognize that everybody's going to say, oh, well, if you go to pay campsites, it's a lot easier. Yes, the more money you have in any aspect of life things get easier but over time like this morning i got up went out i sat by the edge of the cliff here drank a couple cups of coffee uh, got a little bit motivated uh, started filtering some water changed the oil in the generator checked to make sure the mice haven't eaten up on, under the engine so i took the shroud off noticed that we had a little propane leak problem i had to fix so you know by by 9 30 everything all my chores were done and I could just sit back and relax. No, I don't have any long-term plans, but you got to have an emergency backup plan just in case something goes wrong. Thanks for watching. Click like if you like the video and happy travels.